Today I have the flashy new Galaxy S22 Ultra from Samsung. But there's really nothing new here, this is just a remodeled Note 20 Ultra. This one has a shattered display and the OLED has bled out, leaving the screen permanently black. I'll be showing you how to replace the display with a new frame as well. This video is not about removing the display only. Let's head over to the hot mat. The back is much easier to heat than last year's model since this one lacks the giant rectangular camera bump. Using a super thin metal shim, I can slip under the back glass and start separating the adhesive. There's a link to this tenth of a millimeter thin tool in the video description, but a razor blade or a playing card should accomplish the same thing. When the adhesive starts to catch on the tool, I'll add a few drops of isopropyl alcohol to soften it up again and keep right on slicing. Removing the back panel reveals an incredibly familiar design. There are only a handful of differences between this and the older Note 20 Ultra. Even the S Pen is on the same side, though you can clearly see the periscope camera has greatly increased in size. Five Phillips screws hold the wireless charging coil and shield over the board. This needs to be removed first in order to access the battery and other connections on the board. As you should know by now, if you've watched any of my other videos, disconnecting the battery is pretty important. The small top mid panel only has three screws holding it in this time around. All the panel screws are identical throughout the phone, so don't worry about keeping a screw map there. Under that panel we get a peek at a new ear speaker design, but more on that later. I'll also disconnect the nearby Legos to prepare the board for removal. Down to the bottom there are six more of those screws that hold the lower speaker and panel in place over the charging port. Samsung has started a trend of putting pry points on either side of this plastic piece so it can be popped off easier. Thanks Samsung. Under there I can go ahead and disconnect these two ribbons. I assume they meant for the larger one to read sub, but failed to properly space things. So I'm going to call this the SUB cable. Next I'll remove the three screws that hold the charging board to the frame. These should be kept separate. Before I get too excited, it's a good time to remember to take out the SIM tray before I snap it trying to remove the charging board. Up top, a single screw in the camera array acts like a board screw to hold it to the frame. This should also be kept separate from the other panel screws. Now the board is free to be walked out of the frame, gently, as this is a stacked logic board that does not like any kind of bending. Just above the S Pen is a 5G antenna block. It isn't screwed in like last generation, and it is oriented to face out of the back of the phone rather than through the side railing. Just to the left of the battery is another 5G block. This one is the same design as previous Samsungs that supported 5G and has two screws holding it in place. Back to the hot mat, the battery is held in with strong adhesive and the selfie camera has hot glue holding it in. A bit of isopropyl alcohol will also help get the battery out safely without bending. The ridiculous hot glue around the selfie camera can be picked out if you try to force the camera out, the sensor could be damaged. I was unable to locate the vibration motor in the phone, until I broke apart one of the ear speakers looking for it. This is super interesting considering my video on using a vibration motor as a speaker. It appears Samsung might have started doing just that. Now I'll take my new frame with the display pre-installed. Interestingly, the heat pipe on this one is copper, whereas the original was a silver color. I have a suspicion that this part is an OEM pull from a European model. This could also explain why the 5G radio slot on the left side doesn't have screw holes milled out of the frame. This isn't really an issue, the antenna will still fit just fine and be sandwiched under the back glass. After some speedy reassembly, I'll get this device powered on for testing just before I seal the back panel on the phone. This one is working well. Thanks for watching till the end of the video, it really helps me out. If you enjoyed this repair and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. If you're looking for more weird stuff that I do, come over to my Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I'll see you next time.